In 1913, four prominent visionary businessmen in Columbus, Ohio, decided their hometown needed a championship caliber 18-hole golf course. Golf fever was sweeping the nation, and the nine-hole club in nearby Marble Cliff simply wasn't up to par. So these four men, one of whose grandson and great-grandson would become president of the United States, set out to purchase a tract of land in Upper Arlington, near the banks of the Scioto River. As the vision for the new Scioto Country Club began to take shape, one of the four founding members had the audacious notion to hire the world's most acclaimed golf course designer of the era, a Scotsman named Donald J. Ross. Ross had already put his signature style on several of what were fast becoming the most celebrated courses in America. In 1916, under Ross's masterful design, Scioto joined that elite group and became an instant classic, presenting unique challenges to golfers of every level of proficiency. There should be two ways to play a hole, Ross mused, one for the physically strong and one for the not so strong. The holes should be trapped, he added, so that par golf depends upon skill rather than physical strength. Scioto's reputation spread quickly, and with British-born U.S. National Open champion George Sargent serving as its head professional, Scioto was tapped to host the 1926 National Open, a remarkably high honor for such a young course. At that event, with the eyes of the world focused on Scioto Country Club, a young Georgian who was on the brink of becoming the world's greatest golfer took home the trophy. That golfer, Robert Tyre Jones Jr., better known as Bobby Jones, recalls his historic win at Scioto as a major springboard to his storied reign atop the golfing world. The event itself, meanwhile, cemented Scioto's reputation as one of the world's elite venues, and a mere five years later, it would host another major championship, the 1931 Ryder Cup, pitting the best U.S. golfers against the British counterparts. Fittingly, the American team, led by Captain Walter Hagen and teammate Gene Saracen, secured the victory for their home country. It would be nearly two decades before Scioto hosted another major event. Columbus, Ohio, a virtually this time the 1950 PGA Championship. But the club by this time had clearly made its way into the tapestry of top tier American golf courses. In the 1950s and 60s, celebrities, movie stars, politicians, and notables from every walk of life were flocking to Scioto to play its alluring course. Meanwhile, a local kid growing up in the shadow of the course was beginning to develop a set of skills that would ultimately make him the greatest player the game had ever seen. Jack William Nicholas began walking the course with his father, Charlie, at the age of 10. Young Jack began spending long summer days working on his game, and at the age of 12, he posted an eye-popping 18-hole score of 69 on the demanding Scioto course. His singular domination of the sport would only grow from there. Nicholas tore through the amateur and collegiate ranks like no one had before. As the 1950s drew to a close, Jack was competing in international competitions, not to mention the U.S. Open and the Masters Tournament, while still in his teenage years. By the end of his fabled career, the Golden Bear would win a whopping 117 tournament championships and 18 majors, a record that still stands to this day. And it all began on the friendly but challenging course in his own backyard. Over the course of its first century of existence, the course at Scioto Country Club experienced a variety of changes. Some were due to the natural growth and decay of the physical elements, while others were brought about by well-intentioned efforts to reflect the game's changing demands. At the outset, Donald Ross had used the landscape's existing topography to dictate the routing and placement of fairways, hazards, and greens. 
God creates golf courses, Ross once said, and architects merely discover them. In his initial design, putting surfaces were installed at existing grades, which allowed players to incorporate a ground game along with an aerial approach. Among the changes to the course, the most significant departure from Donald Ross' original design came in the early 1960s, when Dick Wilson and his team attempted to modernize the course with narrowed fairways, left and right bunkering, and elevated greens. Unfortunately, these adjustments caused the course to lose many of the distinguishing characteristics that had made the Donald Ross design course such a jewel in the first place. It was with this in mind that the staff and membership of Scioto Country Club undertook its most ambitious project in over 100 years, to restore the course as closely as possible to its original Donald Ross design while making necessary accommodations for the modern game. Architect Andrew Green was carefully selected to oversee the project. Green, well-versed in the design styles of Ross and other Golden Age architects, brought a wealth of experience having restored classic courses such as Congressional Country Club, Oak Hill Country Club, the Inverness Club, and many others. Green's overriding goal was to bring back the originality, challenge, and variety that Scioto displayed when it hosted the 1926 National Open. The qualities that inspired legendary Scottish golfers Harry Varden and Ted Ray to call Scioto one of the finest inland courses in the world. Over the course of the project, previous grades for green complexes were restored. Fairways were widened and adjusted. Bunkers were rebuilt. Tees were leveled. And an ultra-modern drainage and irrigation system was installed to improve playability. Curiously, perhaps the most informative and enlightening document to help Green understand Ross's original vision was this aerial view drawing of the course made in 1926. The drawing became a guiding template to ensure that the newly redesigned course would be a sympathetic restoration of the layout that had placed Scioto on the national and international golfing map. Thanks to its preeminent design, Scioto remains just one of five courses in the entire country to host the U.S. Open, the PGA Championship, the Ryder Cup, the U.S. Amateur Championship, and the U.S. Senior Open. Scioto Country Club's rediscovered golf course provides today's player with an unmistakable spiritual connection to the golden age of golf while serving as a living bridge between not only the two greatest golfers of the 20th century, but also to the present and future greats who are following in the footsteps of those two legends. Reaction to the club's thoughtful and intentional effort to march forward to the past has been universally enthusiastic. In fact, the end result has been so spectacular that even Andrew Green, returning to Scioto after several months away, exclaimed, it's far better than I ever dreamed it would be. Now it's time for lovers of the game to enjoy this newly uncovered, brightly polished, and uniquely memorable Scioto Country Club golf course for themselves. To experience the features that once made it and are now making it one of the finest courses in the entire world. Thank you.